Uh-oh. Yeah, we are okay. recording, and, and we'll edit later if there's anything that comes up, or, or if we have any technical problems, we can always edit it, edit it down later. Okay. Well, hello, and welcome to GoldDerby.com. I'm Chris Beecham, and in Australia is Rob LaCuria. Hey, gang. We're here with uh, Piper Parabo today from Covert Affairs on USA Network. Uh, just uh, finished the season one just a few weeks ago, and um, glad to have you with us today. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Do you have a nice Thanksgiving? Piper, this is a... I did. I did. I'm actually still at my parents' house. Um, <laughs> it's sort of all still going on, actually. We're having leftovers. That sounds wonderful. So, um... This is actually Chris and I, our first main chat for Gold Derby, so we thought we would just, you know, make you feel really special that uh, you've, you, you're our first here, and, and we're pretty excited to have you on the um, on the site. Um, Thanks, Chris, do you, want to kick off? do you want to kick off with maybe some questions for Piper? Yeah, sure. Um, as I said, the first season ended a few weeks ago. Tell um, tell us about uh, that experience of working on the first season, how you feel, feel like it went. Feel like it went. Um, I felt like the first season went great. I mean, oh, where'd you guys go? Oh, no. Oh, there you are. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Wait. There you are. Um, the first season went great. I, it was my, it's my first television show. So I didn't, there was a lot that I, you know, it was a pretty steep learning curve for me. Also, working with Doug Lyman, um, you know, if you're doing a television show that's action produced by Doug Lyman, it's going to be also a steep learning curve. You know, it's, uh, the stunts are much more dangerous. <laughs> so, um, but I really love uh, our two creators, um, Matt Corman and Chris Ord. Um, I think they're just really cool and smart and great guys. And I don't know, we had a great time. Um, just um, speaking about that, Piper, um, when, when you, you when the, when the, when the first episode aired, I, I noticed straight up that there was a really quite dangerous scene when the baking credits are um, airing for the pilot. Was that you uh-huh. or was that my stunt double? Jumping out of the plane? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a stunt double. I can't really lie now. I found out later that I should be lying about all this, but I can't. <laughs> it was a stunt double. But even when I watch it, I'm like, God, that really... Looks like me, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It really does. Thanks. I wish it was. I would have done it. The network just won't let me jump out of planes while we're in the middle of a season. Not way too dangerous. Way too dangerous. Hmm. Well, the show has so many uh, twists and turns along the way. It really keeps the audience guessing. I'm sure it probably, as you get from script, script to script, it keeps you guessing as well. What uh, What's it like when you get that next script and, and you get to go through it and see what's happening next? It's really exciting. Um, Chris Gorham and Sandal Ramamurthy, who who play the two leading men on the show, um, were always sort of like, Sendel somehow has got some deal with the one of the girls in the production office, so he gets his script a, like a few minutes before Chris and I, so he'll come into the set like waving it in our faces and like opening like, oh, oh, no, you know, really teasing us about it because there's so many secrets that are revealed each episode that we're always sort of breathless for the next one. And because, you know, in film or in theater, when you get a, when you get a script, you know the whole story. So you're constructing the character knowing where it's going to end. But with television, you only know maybe one week ahead. So it really keeps you very true to the moment and you can't play the ending, which for me has been one of the great, great experiences about this is that, and like in life, you don't know where it's going, and so I find that the it, it makes for a better arc as a whole season because you were you never knew where it was going to go. Absolutely. Um, I was wondering, uh, you mentioned Chris Gorham. He he and you have extremely good chemistry on on screen. And um, did did you know him from previous jobs, or is it just you know you just kind of develop that over the season? We de- we developed it over the season. We oh, oh gosh. Wait, hold on. Okay, there. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, we met at his audition, and um, and uh, I remember we did one of the pilot scenes in his audition where we're on either side of a bathroom stall door talking, and he was the only guy. He as, he, as we were talking, we were both near a wall, and he kind of leaned up against the wall and like was le- he was so close and like leaning into me and really understood how to 
kind of relax and um, make the scene very intimate, even in a friendship relationship. And I, that was the first moment where I thought, oh, this could really work. He's really comfortable in his own skin um, and and confident enough to just take it easy. And I think that provides a space for the relationship to to develop into something interesting. And he and I are also, you know, he and I always think Augie and Annie should get together, but no one ever writes that for us. So we're constantly trying to, like, inject these little things to keep <laughs> the sort of pot at a simmer, just keep it on a low boil. So if they'll let us do it, we've got somewhere to turn it up from. So he and I in rehearsal yeah. are always looking for things to kind of just put the heat up a little bit. Now, you, um, you like we mentioned uh, the first season is over. Uh, have you started working on season two yet? I've been talking with the boys, um, the writers' room, about what's going to happen in the second season, but um, we haven't. They've started writing, and um, and they're really. It's really fun, you know. I'll see. I just saw um, Elevator to the Gallows for the first time, that Louis Mall film, and when um, there's a way that a guy sneaks out of a room with a switchblade to close this lock, and I thought it was so Annie, and so I sent them the scene, and I sent them, you know, let's remember this for when I have to break, you know, back out of somewhere, and they're really good about sort of saying like, can you scuba dive, you know, in the middle of the night, I'll get these funny messages, and so I get kind of feelings about where it's going to go and how they want to push the envelope, but I don't really know what's going to happen yet. Um, Piper, I was wondering, um, given that this show is obviously a, a huge hit, USA um, send out uh, press releases all the time talking about how it's, I think, the, you know, the highest rated show on cable on Tuesdays and it's done really well as a, as a debut show. Given that you know, this is your first TV show, have you noticed that you're, you're much more noticed on the street and people come up to you and tell you how much they love your character and they feel like they, they, they know you as a person or, or is it just starting to become a slow build now? What's, what's your sense of that? Well, when we, we film in Toronto um, and it wasn't airing in Toronto when we were when we were working. So so I was kind of in this bubble where when we were shooting, no one around us knew about the show. But then I got back to New York and it was like, bam, there were buses and billboards and people. And and um, I live in the East Village where people sort of pride themselves on being really cool. And oh, you disagree. Oh, there you are. And even still, um like the first day back, I went to get my coffee and the meter maid came up to me and she was like, like your show, watch it all the time. Like she, she was trying to keep it cool, but usually people in these village don't say anything because they, they sort of pride themselves on being too cool. But yeah, people definitely come up to me about it now, but they, they're really positive about it. And so I don't know. And I love the show. So I, it's something that I'm happy to talk about, you know, and that, I think, I don't know. It makes for an easy dialogue. Well, we are, uh, you may or may not know an awards website. We, we talk and probably talk to death awards all the time. Golden Globe Awards coming up next in the cycle, uh, followed by SAG Awards. And Golden Globes, uh, voters especially like to go for, uh, popular shows, brand new shows. Uh, have you been involved in any award shows in the past? What would be your sense of, of, um, or how, how exciting would that be if the show got some recognition, if you got some recognition? Well, um, the only award show that I've been involved with in the past is the Tonys. Um, the Broadway play that I did last year was was nominated for Best Play, and uh, it was really exciting. I mean, I know awards can probably be really stressful, and um, but it was such a sort of New York experience. Like we all, after our performance, we all put on our gowns and tuxedos, and our theater was close enough just to walk to Radio City and and then go to the Tonys. So it was this real kind of glamorous New York moment. Um, and I, I would be really happy um, if the show was recognized. Obviously, you know, um, I was watching the football games yesterday and uh, my team lost. But, you know, I was talking about with my brother that when somebody scores, even though that guy sort of gets all the glory, a lot of people had to do a lot of things right for that goal to happen. And so I feel that way about the show. You know, if we or I... Um, were to get recognition, it's really because of everybody's incredible hard work. A lot of people have to do a lot of things right for that sort of thing to happen. I think it'd be great. Yeah. 
Uh, you're definitely right, Piper, and, and also it's all, always about just um, you know how well the show is received, and it's usually a whole a range of events that come together for for a show or a star to to um to, to receive the recognition that they're hoping to get. And uh, like, like if I just quickly read this up very quickly, I noticed the other day New York Times said the show is fun and clever, the action is first rate, you have panache in the role, the LA Times said um, that you were charming, made some really favourable comparisons to really great shows like Alias and Buffy. Um, the Philadelphia Daily News said that it's because of you mainly that the show is so entertaining. So there's a lot of really lovely things that are being said about you. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that you're right up there um, with a really good shot um, in the actress category. And the show even itself um, is, is also in the running. So it's, it's awfully exciting. It's just a matter of, you know, it's really the luck of the draw at the end of the day. And um, so hopefully... Uh, if you're ever talking to anyone, you know, to do with the show, I, I wouldn't say that it's completely, um, uh, you know, going to be out of the blue. And hopefully, you might be um, get preparing yourself for, for the good news in, you know, in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks. Well, we don't want to. I mean, I think also. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I think also it has to do. I mean, just because mostly when it comes to award shows, I'm just watching. But it seems like it also has to do with what's going on in the world and in the country. You know, like. Um, Fair Game just came out, that film um, about Valerie playing Wilson, and and it's sort of interesting that there is a sort of resurgence of a kind of spy zeitgeist. I don't know if that came from, you know, 24 being so popular and the interesting work they were doing in that, but there does seem to sort of be like a movement in that direction, and, and I think that has a, a lot to do with it, too. You know, people, um, what they want to watch um, is also surrounded by all that's that's happening in the world. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, I wanted to bring up something uh, in your past, in your career. Uh, that's probably the, the one thing that people have asked you most about in the last 10 years since it came out. That's Coyote Ugly. Um, I, I've noticed, uh, I work in the cable industry, and I've noticed uh, when, I, when I see the numbers each year, it's still in the top five or six movies in terms of numbers of times it airs uh, on cable and uh, also the ratings that it gets along uh, with uh, you know movies like uh, Shawshank Redemption and Pretty Woman and and just I'm sure that's uh, something you get asked about all the time. Is it is it fond memories for you? It's hard to believe it's been a decade. I know it is. It's really hard to believe, although it was on TV like. Um, uh, I uh, I broke my leg in one of the stunts near the end of the season, and so I was laid up um, for a bit, and uh, and it was on TV, and I was watching it, and I thought, oh my God, I look so young. I thought I was so grown up when I did that movie, and I thought, like, I got this, I know this, and I was looking, and I thought, holy Toledo, you're so young. So, I mean, it holds a special place in my heart, because it was really the beginning, Um but, uh, yeah, I can't believe it, it was so long ago. I could when I looked at it, but it doesn't <laughs> yeah. feel like a long time ago. So what's next for you, Piper? Are you just now going to you know, focus on the show and you know, the season two, or have you got other things in the pipeline going on at the moment in terms of work? I do have other things going on in the pipeline. Um, I live in New York, and so uh, for a reason, because um, for the theater. And um, I actually, I mean, I got off my broken leg and started walking just, I guess it's now, not quite three weeks ago. Um, so I started doing auditions uh, for the theater on crutches, which is a hilarious enterprise. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping um, to do some work. Um, oh, my gosh, why does this keep doing it? Sorry, this is my bad technical knowledge. Um <laughs> I have a project that I'm hoping to start in January, but we're not totally closed on it, so I can't say anything more about that. Well, we want to thank you so much for your time spending a few minutes here on Thanksgiving weekend, and we wish you uh, all the best over the holiday season and uh, when you go back to New York, and um, um, great luck with the awards coming up. Thank you. So nice to talk to you guys, and, and have a great Thanksgiving and a great weekend, Rob. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Well, there you go.